So what are we doing today, Nathaniel? We're changing them out? No, we're actually just putting them back. Uh-huh. We're taking the top off. Mm-hmm. And then we put on. Okay. What you doing over there, Andrew? Are you cooking? Yeah, are you cooking? Oh, we have so much fun. We got these out. We had had these put up for a long time. And Nathaniel and I got them out last night. And we're working with them. And they're fun because you can make different vehicles with them. All right. The wheels on the concrete mixer go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the concrete mixer go round and round all through the town. The drum on the construction, uh, the concrete mixer goes swish, 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 swish. The drum on the construction concrete mixer goes swish, 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 all through the town. What do we use concrete for, Nathaniel? Uh, for the eyeballs and wool and stuff like that. You're right. Yeah, you're right. So what do you think this construction, this concrete mixer is doing? Where is it going? Is it going to pull... Submit for a house. For a house? Yeah. Okay. That, that's <laughs> Another news. Remade. Andrews. That's gonna be getting remade. Lots of toys out. Going to be remade? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So we promised you the rest of the Amy Carmichael book today. Let's do that real quick. This is the second part of the book, Amy Carmichael, Rescuing the Children, written by Renee Taft Millock, and the pictures are by Brian Pollard. Yesterday we learned about a little girl whose family was Hindu and they didn't want her to be Christian. After eight months, Erulai was able to escape. She ran to Amy's house, but in a very weakened state. She lay in Amy's bed, so sick she could barely speak. Her father came to take her back, but found she was too weak. For many days he visited and saw the love and care that Amy gave his daughter when he came to see her there. And so, when she was finally well, the father changed his mind, allowing her to stay and live with Amy all the time. Another teenage Hindu girl decided she would be a secret Christian and not tell her friends or family, for if they knew that she believed in Christianity, they'd beat her, and her very life might be in jeopardy. But after three long years, she felt she somehow had to try to find her way to Amy's house. She knew she lived nearby. When evening came, the girl crept out and tiptoed through the night, and as she crossed the bridge, a Christian banner came in sight. This must be Amy's house, she thought, and pounded on the door, and Amy took her in as she'd helped other girls before. Now Hindu temple priests kept girls locked up both night and day. They made the girls work just like slaves with no time left to play. Right after one girl's father died, her weary mother said, You must live at the temple now. At least you will be fed. The young girl's name was Prina. She was only five years old. At night inside the temple, she felt fearful, sad, and cold. She never saw her mother, and she could not play outside. Since Prina wasn't loved at all, she often hid and cried. One night, the girl escaped, but back at home, her mother said, You cannot stay. You must return straight to your temple bed. The Hindu priest then punished her to teach her to obey. But Prina kept on dreaming she would get away one day. Two years dragged on, and then one day she chanced to overhear some talk about a woman who said to live quite near. Her name was Amy, and she traveled all throughout their land to talk about the Son of God and offer helping hands. She heard how kind this woman was, and that she loved to give her time herself to children who had no good place to live. So Prina thought, if only I could manage to get out. Would Amy help me afterward? There was no time for a doubt. At night, so very quietly, she snuck out of her bed. She tried the door. It was unlocked. So through the streets, she fled. She found a woman at a church and asked if she knew where the Christian lady Amy lived and if she'd take her there. Despite the danger, they set out and came to Amy's place. They found her sipping English tea, a smile on her face. So kind and warm that Prina felt at home and very safe. She climbed right up in Amy's lap and right into her embrace. Now Amy kept this little child who needed her a lot, and Prina soon loved Jesus too and all the things he taught. 
Some other temple children then were rescued, kept, and hidden, though keeping even one of them was totally forbidden. As Amy's family grew in size, there wasn't room inside the little house for all of them to live and sleep and hide. She moved them to the country, to a village far away, with houses and a nursery and land where they could play. She also built a hospital so that it could provide good care for all the orphans who would come from far and wide. And Amy loved her children. She loved each and every one, just as she once had promised when she was so very young. Still people all around the world are waiting everywhere, the hungry, homeless, hurting ones who hope someone will care. God's looking still today for those who follow where he leads, to reach out, just as Amy did, to those who are in need. Amy Carmichael, Rescuing the Children. What an inspirational Christian life. All right, guys, can you help me? Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Come back again, we'll see you soon. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Andrew, can you say bye? Bye. Oh, he's got to wear the hat too. We hope you all have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. All right, hat boys.